My name is Tony Orlando, uh, and I am a double engineer at Polygon, uh, Polygon Labs, um, and I'm Tony Orlando on Twitter, and you can ping me anytime uh, if you have any questions related to Polygon and what we're doing. But before we begin, I guess, let's just start by introducing like the base of why we're all here and what made all of this possible, and that is the Polygon ZK EVM. So on March 27th, the Polygon ZK EVM went live. Um, uh, there's a QR code to the announcement, and it was like the work, uh, basically Jordi's life's work, and like um, a lot of people um, worked towards this particular goal, and we were able to achieve um, a launch on mainnet, um, well, a mainnet beta, and uh, as we all know what the stages of that would look like, um, um, we know that we are progressively moving towards a fully trustless system. But at the at the base of understanding all of this is understanding like just what the ZKVM is. And it basically represents the next chapter of Ethereum scaling. So for Ethereum developers, Polygon ZKVM allows you to seamlessly deploy your code uh, while while basically retaining the entire security of Ethereum, um, uh, but with just faster finality and lower cost. So you could think of like uh, what we're building in the ZKVM as like an, uh, uh, an expanded execution layer for, for Ethereum. Um, and it's a zero knowledge rollup. And what ZK rollups essentially do is that they are scaling solutions that are designed to just increase, increase the throughput on um, all Ethereum mainnet by moving computation and state storage to layer two. Um, and ZK rollups were considered like the, the holy grail of um, the Ethereum protocol. And um, it's, it, it, it took quite a bit of time. Most people did think it was, it was going to be possible within the timeline that we expected. But it's it's been amazing to see the various teams come together, and um, um, and this is just uh, beyond even us, just uh, in terms of the whole ecosystem, and seeing various various um, L2s launch um, uh, really really complicated pieces of technology, um, um, uh, and seeing like solutions being actually built, and we are very very proud to be a part of that whole journey and story and in, uh, Ethereum's development. And um, how, how it essentially works is basically a blockchain is a public database and it's a shared, uh, it's a shared um, computation layer. And uh, the way we think of the EVM essentially is that the EVM is like a shared uh, state machine or, a, or like the world computer. And um, specifically on ZK EVM, we have transactions that are batched and processed. And so they come through. So you have the initial step here where you have the you have transactions that just come in and then they are sequenced. We have uh, through um, uh, we, we have a sequencer that essentially um, sequences all of those applications, aggregates them, and then a validity proof is essentially generated, uh, which is a zero knowledge proof that computes like the all of the state transitions that produces a um, a uh, Merkle root that we then store on L1, but we also um, uh, we also make. Uh, we also use to actually compute like the brand new state given a batch of transactions. So the way that you the way that you could think about it is imagine if you have like a very large receipt. So if you go like to Target or to Costco or something of that sort, and you buy very many items, um, what 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 um, what each of those items represent is like um, a single transaction. And what we do is that inside of the zkVM, we basically batch all of those transactions and give you. Um, uh, a, a zero knowledge proof that represents all of these transactions. So you so basically producing summaries of transactions on chain using zero knowledge proofs. And the reason why we use ZK is because you could actually trust it without necessarily um, uh, uh, being afraid of any kind of fraudulent transaction because it's all done trustlessly and it's using mm -hmm. for the uh, on the mm -hmm. back end. Um, so why would you use the Polygon ZK VM? Uh, you basically inherit Ethereum security. Um, you have almost com uh, full EVM equivalents. Um, there are certain opcodes and different things that we still don't have support. And if you check out our wiki, it actually has information around that. Um, so you could, you could go and check that out. Additionally, um, uh, we, uh, the ZKVMs generally are, are considered to be fast and performing. And eventually, gonna, they're actually going to get to a place where they will power a lot a, a much, much more lower cost, cost transaction as you, as you move ahead. Um, but enough about like the ZKVM. So once we have the ZKVM, what, what we kind of began to see at Polygon is the capacity to build what I call, and I'm hoping 
but none of our marketing has picked up. Um, um, sadly, it's called the ZK verse. It is in my books. Um, but imagine if imagine a future in which you could have um, um, a, a a host of chains that are secured using zero knowledge technology, and that that's essentially what Polygon two point two basically represents is a a a secure ecosystem of chains that are all connected together using zero knowledge technology, and it represents that uh, once we actually got through the, the the bigger hurdle of just deploying the zkvm um and um we, we have seen usage and adoption increase um we then have to step back and look at okay so what what is the next evolution of this given that we have um zk now closer and with that we essentially able to build like uh, the next stage of evolution for for the protocol so it's essentially a protocol that is allows us to basically unify scalability and liquidity and the biggest piece of this is think of app chains right so individual chains that people could deploy at will um that's what the zk evm kind of um, powers through the polygon chain development kit and so if you're building a protocol or you're building a, a particular tool imagine you could use the, the the you could actually deploy your own chain um and once you deploy your own chain you could actually decide how um how uh, how uh, you want it to function? Do you want to be? Do you want to have purely gasless transactions? Do you want to have your own native token? Do you want to be able to power um, different use cases? Um, somebody's building in gaming. We have vast different needs for from a team that's building DeFi and so on and so forth. And so, which is why we have this kind of solution that it, uh, that, that basically is is essentially comprised of a proving layer, which 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 actually gives us the the security that supports the execution. And they are interrupt layer that al allows for cross-chain communication and um, cross-chain um, proof proof uh, generation, which secures the entire network. And then we have a staking layer that enables us to um, uh, maintain the the uh, ecosystem of nodes and uh, uh, the various actors that are needed to ensure that uh, the 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 uh, the protocol is actually functioning. But if you find this is a bit difficult to understand, okay, cool. Um, let's break it down even simpler. And Mark Boyron, who's our CEO, um, let's just simplify this or tweet, right? So if you look at what you're saying there, it's essentially if you seem to understand Polygon 2.0, but here's the simplification. So for you, for most people who know Polygon, they know Polygon as Polygon POS, which is a chain with broader, which is one of the 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 most adopted chains. It's fastest and cheapest on Polygon. Then you have ZKVM, which has uh, which 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 was launched on March 27th, and it has uh, most advanced secure zero knowledge chain. And we have a killer prover that is um, proving to be really good. Great. Um, we have the Polygon uh, and then Polygon of the future is the Polygon of today plus Polygon Maiden, which is uh, which is uh, coming up soon, and it'll be on testnet soon. And then the Polygon Endgame is essentially where we headed. Is Polygon Future plus all of the app chains that people will actually deploy. And if you follow the the um, announcement of the Polygon ZK um, Polygon ZK uh, Polygon Chain Development Kit, you know that we have a couple of uh, partners like Palm, um, Gnosis Pay, um, and different other uh, solutions who are building on Polygon. And uh, we also submitted a governance proposal to Celo. See if they would like to run their CD their their layer two using the Polygon CDK. So it's like um, zk EVM um, as a uh, as a service essentially, and all of those chains will be connected using the LXLY bridge, so that you allow transactions to move across the chains. And um, once we're able to actually connect all of that, then we have um, unified liquidity, right? So um, It'll be really sad if we have all of these app chains being developed and all of these various solutions that then we don't have a simplified way to bring everything together. Um, uh, and so the NFTs that you mint on ASTAR's um, CDK cannot be bridged to Ethereum, which is very sad. But what we want to do is just enable all of that to become really, really um, useful and, and, and yeah. um, portable. So if you're looking at like what, what, what this will enable is that we have ZKVM mainnet, which essentially allows us to um, uh, have like uh, connection to the Ethereum mainnet, but every other app chain 
um, will also have the ability to communicate with with the um, with the uh, Ethereum main. Um, and you also have Polygon Mitre, which is a really cool privacy focused chain, privacy performance chain that is launching. So you could think of this uh, closer to like Stock or or Noir or I mean, uh, Kakairo or something like that. Um, beyond, so this is what it currently looks like. But in the future, we're going to be upgrading the LX uh, LY bridge to be fully cross chain. So you'll be able to not only just terminate to Ethereum, but terminate to any other chain, any other app chain that exists within our ecosystem. Um, let's go through, let's define. beyond. So let's start with the base definition. Um, what is a blockchain bridge? It essentially enables two blockchains to facilitate, um, it, it uh, basically connects two uh, blockchains and facilitates secure and verifiable communication between those two parties, right? And you could actually, you could act, and, and the two main things that it actually powers is messaging and it powers, um, a transfer of assets. So you could think of like ERC-20s or any kind of digital asset that's based on the blockchain can be transferred using the LXLY bridge. Um, if you want to think about it, there, there, there are many types of bridges that actually exist. Um, um, and they could be broadly classified into into two types. So you have trustless bridges, uh, which is like the LXLY. So they operate using decentralized systems such as smart contracts with embedded algorithms. Um, and the benefits is that um, uh, the security of the bridge is the same as that of the underlying blockchain. And so you have native blockchain that every L uh, and every L2 implements its own native blockchain. Um, and so if you if you check out the Arbitrum, um, the, the Arbitrum bridge um, uh, and various other bridges, you'll find uh, their own uh, their own implementations. And they basically enable users to remain in control of, the, of their funds, basically through smart smart contracts. And then you have trusted bridges, which depend upon a central entity or system for their operations. So you could think of like Accela, um, um, Layer Zero. They're, they're very, very many. And what they do is that they depend upon a centralized entity or system for their for their operation. And the big trust, trust assumption that you're making when you're using any of these tools is you're saying, I trust this team and therefore I will submit my funds to them. And I will trust that they do have the funds on the destination chain that I want um, that I want my, my liquidity or my message to actually appear. Um, and so you, you, you're making, you're making that kind of a, um, you, you, you're making that kind of assumption there. And if you are know, to summarize like the different types of chains, um, or the different types of bridge, um, trustless bridges are essentially trust minimized bridges where, um, um, you will minimize the need for you to trust the bridge because it's it basically inheriting the security of the of the underlying blockchain and the trust of bridges they are you're making trust assumptions and so that those are those are the challenges that you actually kind of have to navigate if you're thinking about how to how to build those bridges beyond um, but now let's delve a bit into lxly so uh, i'll just go through the process because i actually don't want to spend too much time on the theory and then we'll we'll jump a bit in, into the code where i'll take you through like the the code sample um, but essentially, the bridging process is basically defined them in like five different stages and steps. Um, and so the very first one is you deposit tokens on the L1. And once you deposit tokens, um, you, you, you essentially um, then go and, uh, and append like um, um, uh, your uh, particular, or rather your uh, particular transaction is basically appended to the exit lease and the, and the uh, global exit route. And, and then that the uh, the bridge smart contracts take, take care of that, and then it's synced on the uh, L2. So the sequence that then eventually picks up that uh, that transaction, and it's synced on the L2, and then it makes it available for you to actually claim the assets. And once you then claim it, um, the process is then validated and then completed um, um, on the on the back end. Sorry, I'm trying to move the presentation forward. So essentially how this works is um, for you as the as the user or, or, or as any user, you would initiate a transaction on Ethereum L1 to deposit tokens to the or the ZKVM bridge contract. And that would trigger the bridge asset function of the Polygon ZKVM bridge, right? Because uh, what you're essentially doing, you, I mean, the, the place for you to fundamentally start, unless you magically had just let ETH, is that you're going to look for ETH or you're going to look for some kind of ERC-20 to be able to transact on 
any uh, any uh, L two. That's your that's your first step, right? Um, otherwise, you won't be able to pay for gas. Um, so basically, it triggers the bridge asset function of the Polygon DKVM contract. And once you do that, um, it, uh, the bridge asset function internally calls a deposit function, which calculates a leaf value based on the deposit and adds it to the Merkle tree of the pending deposit, right? So you don't have to do this. That happens uh, internally. I mean, you look at the code, you'll be able to see how that goes. Um, and then after that, after after a certain period of time, um, the beauty of uh, of L2s and not like up, uh, uh, ZK, ZK EVMs and ZK rollups is that it's just a small period of time as opposed to seven days or something like that. So um, a certain period of time, the global exit route is updated on the, uh, on the L2 and the sequencer essentially fetches the latest route um and uh ensures that uh uh at which 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 uh we, we, which ensured that uh the the exit route is is, is stored in the designated storage slots of the global exit route contract of the uh, l2 um and essentially this is the next stage that the that requires user interaction the user can now construct a merkle proof for the deposit leaf on left two and submit a transaction to call the claim asset function um, and once you call the claim asset function, it then exists on the end and uh, Bob's your uncle essentially. And on the back end, uh, once you trigger the claim asset function, the Polygon DKVM bridge contract um, uh, follows the steps and verifies the provided local proof and ensures that you have the deposit lease authenticity. But that seems like a bit of a mouthful. So I'm going to spend the rest of the time here. Um, just I'll spend five minutes and leave couple minutes at the end there for anybody who has questions just give me one second um, uh, right so sorry do you have any link or or youtube yes. or whatever that, that uh, it would help me to understand how ck really works um, I know it's hashing. I know there is some American tree, but I never studied correctly. So if, if you have any good introduction to share, it would be good. Right. So um, again, let me let me just share this on my end here, so that you have a bit of information. Sorry, one second. So um, I'd encourage you, first of all, if anybody's looking to um, submit to the LXLY uh, bounty, please scan the QR code, and this QR code will show you, will take you to the, to the code base that I'm showing you now, which essentially um, gives you an idea of what that looks like um, for you to be able to actually build like a cross-chain solution, right? Um, and this is the official documentation. So I think Mariano was asking, like, um, if they want to get started, you could actually scan this QR code. And to take it to the ZKVM docs and it'll show you how to how to use it. But to be entirely clear, unless you're doing anything super complicated, the vast majority of smart contracts could just simply be deployed to the ZKEVM in the very same way you've been deploying to any other chain. Um, and so um, um, it's important for me to, to 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 let you know that you don't need to you don't need to do anything to be able to use the ZKVM. You could use it exactly the same way you use um, any other chain. So I don't know if okay, I thanks. Yeah. Not fully, but at the, but yes, something. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You could uh, you could delve into the docs and then try to bring something like that. Um. So I'll then go to the pin uh to the pin ping pong code example. Um. I won't spend too much time here. Uh, but we have the ZKVM contracts, and so you could implement a sender or a receiver on your end. Um. And let's first start looking at the sender. Um. And what that does is that essentially um, you're pulling in a couple of interfaces. So you're pulling in the the uh, the message receiver, and then you're pulling in the ZKVM bridge, which is the actual implementation. And when you initiate this, um, when you when you deploy the contract, you have to provide the ZKVM bridge address there that you can look at. Um, and once you get to the uh, this is the this is just for messaging. Um, you could you you only need to specify these uh, these uh, three parameters, and you could deploy, right? So it basically comes down to these three parameters: the destination network. So this is the chain ID. Uh, whether or not you want to force an update of the of the global route, which you usually do, 
and then the value that you want to pass, right? So the value is um, is uh, is essentially um, encoded and it's passed here. So you can see the ping message here, and then Polygon DKVM bridge message, and you have all of those. And that's essentially it. Like it's not that difficult for you to beyond to send messages from Polygon uh, ZKVM to uh, Ethereum L1. Uh, and if you're using uh, Gorelli, then you can use that as well. Um, beyond And on the receiver side, you also have, um, you're basically extending the same receiver and the, and, and the bridge. And um, once, you, once you implement that bridge um, uh, in the uh, constructor, you actually pass in the address and then the network ID of the of the bridge that you actually uh, you're actually implementing, and um, that is then set, and that becomes like the place that it, it will be receiving events from. And um, on message received is just the main handler that you need to be able to 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 transact with, and uh, it'll it, it basically gets the origin address, the origin network, and then the data that was passed, um, and then just some basic require here that ensures. That um, that uh, the address uh, uh, the message came from the zkvm bridge that you specified, and then um, this here could only be called by the sender on the other network. So so the the ping sender that needs to uh, reach the origin address that you passed there, um, and yeah, the ping value you you would decode that value and then just ping right. So really bare bones simple example that shows you how you could. Um, send messages across chain. Um, and if you go back into this repo, um, you'll have, there's a, there's a uh, custom C 20 that goes into, into what that looks like um, for like uh, ERC 20 asset transfers. Um, for the sake of this presentation, I won't go into it. I'll just delve into the scripts here. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, the deployment. Um, so you would deploy, you would deploy uh, the bridge you deploy beyond the mainnet, and then you verify the mainnet contract. So once you deploy your your uh, your your instance of that bridge network um, beyond, then it's essentially uh, made available, and then you could provide your own um, uh, uh, factor beyond for you to be able to actually start to bridge ERC twenty tokens. And once you're done with the deployment, um, you could verify the contracts on mainnet or Gorelli or ZKVM. And um, once you go into the scripts here, the scripts show you how to bridge essentially um, uh, the messages from, from a destination network. So if the network name is ZKVM testnet or ZKVM mainnet, um, and it essentially um, uh, deploys, deploys the, the uh, Oh, basically contacts the bridge that was already initialized um, and the bridge factory and from there it just starts to run the standard transaction that we actually accustomed to so you have the approve um, uh, and you could you could initiate the, the the approve there and then you could also initiate like the bridge which allows you basically to bridge the token and once you bridge the token that's it so I'm hoping that this has provided just some basic understanding um, of what that would look like for you. Um, given that we have 30 minutes, I can't go fully into like the uh, all of the code examples, um, but I hope that this was useful.